Hello everyone. How are you? Good? I'm great, thank you. It's really uh, good to be back. I'm really happy to be, uh, to be here this afternoon to share and then talk to you guys a little bit about grammar, but from a different perspective. We're going to look at grammar as a communicative resource, okay? And uh, um, so it's, I'm really glad to be here. Uh, it's my third time here at Tizal Pinheiro, so first time, uh, yeah, some of you have seen before, yeah. yeah. Uh, first time I talked about speaking skills, then um, second time was about teaching Lexis, and today teaching grammar, okay? So thank you very much, and, and I hope that this session can be helpful for all of us, okay? Yes, you mentioned that your, your first time here at the Zopia, did you go the one? No, it's my third time ah, here. Third. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Sure? <laughs> okay, how old do you think I am? <laughs> really? <laughs> 26, okay, 25, 19. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> You've made my day. <laughs> what else? No, 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 come on. <laughs> Not that much, right? I, I'm, I'm going to turn 30 this month, at the end of the month. Yeah, so I'm 29, actually. But thanks for, you know, the 19th uh, kind of thing. Yeah, thank you. But I'm, I'm 30, yeah, despite my youthful looks, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> All right. So, what's the message that I have here? Okay. You have some key words there. With the person next to you, I'd like you to come up with the message. What's my message here? Just share with the person next to you. But what's my message for you here? Yeah, the, the whole message. All right, let's see, let's see. So some suggestions. What's your name again? Julia. So you have an idea there. What's that? I hope you enjoy the session. Can you hear from that? Yeah. Okay, do you agree? Is that basically what you have? Yeah, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the session, okay, this session, and find it useful and that you can implement ideas in your lessons, okay? But look, I just have, well done, Julie, very good, well done, everybody. So, but I just have words there, right? I don't have the whole sentence. How come you were able to come up with the whole sentence and the whole message? <laughs> That's a good point. He said, because you are smart. <laughs> <laughs> that is the point. <laughs> what else? <laughs> okay, so all the words here, they carry meaning, right? So you can, by looking at the, the words, you can come up with the whole sentence, all right? Exactly, they are content words, all right? So basically here, we went from Lexis to grammar, okay? We went from words that carry uh, meaning, content words, to the whole sentence in which we needed uh, auxiliary verbs or maybe pronouns, grammar words there, all right? So sometimes we're gonna go from, uh, we can go from lexis to grammar. And uh, this shows, to start with, that are grammar and lexis two separate things? That's the first question. Exactly, okay? They are connected, there is a, a, a relation between them, that are closely related, okay? So, in light of that, what is grammar 
And why do we teach it then? Can you share with the person next to you? Could be. It's a possibility. Que piensas que es uh, gramática? Es porque, es porque la enseñamos. Bien, pero, pero una, una posibilidad. All right? Okay? So, any contributions? What is grammar? So, can, can you say that out loud so everybody can hear? Grammar is the art of putting your words together. Could be that that's one possibility, yeah? What else? One at a time, okay, guys, so, so we can hear each other. <laughs> so grammar, I mean, there are, there are many, many ways of, of seeing this, okay? But basically, it's one of the systems of the language, okay? And uh, as, uh, what's your name again? As Dears has suggested, it's, it's a way of connecting things. So we have morphology, we have syntax, and that's basically how uh, the language uh, uh, is uh, organized and uh, we have the rules that sort of govern the language, okay? And why is it important to teach grammar? Okay, so, so language makes sense, to use language correctly, to understand the language, okay? And the thing is, for many, many years, grammar was seen as uh, uh, the, the only way in which people would acquire the language. So in order for you to learn the language, you had to learn the grammar of the language, and then you would know how the language is structured so that you can get vocabulary and, and things and put them back into uh, uh, these lots, okay, to understand uh, uh, and, and to sort of come up with the language and stuff, okay? But is that really the case? No. Not really. In the 1980s, with the communicative approach and, and uh, the, the, the studies of second language acquisition, grammar took on a whole new meaning and role in uh, second language teaching and learning, okay? And that's basically what we're going to talk about today. We're going to see grammar as a communicative resource, okay? So... How can we use grammar in order to provide communication? How can we use grammar to make communication more effective? And how can we teach learners to use their grammatical knowledge more effectively to communicate uh, uh, in a more effective way as well, okay? So, we're going to watch a video by Jack Richards. Who's familiar with Jack Richards? Okay. Yeah, and have you seen this video in which he talks about grammar as a communicative resource? No. No? So, basically, he's going to, to share his view of grammar as a way of making communication. And what I'd like you to do is this. Watch the video and what are the, ba the, the, the main ideas that uh, he uh, introduces in the video. Okay? What are the main ideas that he presents concerning grammar and communication? All right? Hello again. I'd like to talk about grammar today. A lot of teachers ask me, should we be teaching grammar? Is grammar still important? And so on. And of course, with some of the current methodologies that are being used today, grammar has a different role, different status. I like to think of grammar as a communicative resource. Teaching grammar as a communicative resource. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the grammar books that you probably are familiar with or the way grammar is taught traditionally, the focus is on understanding how language works and also practicing using grammatical rules and so on at the level of the sentence. And so students study how to use adverbs, how to use the tenses and so on. 
But what's important, of course, is being able to use that knowledge of language while one is in the process of communicating. And that's what I mean by using grammar as a communicative resource. So, for example, um, take the case of uh, recounts or narratives. When we're engaged in conversation, a lot of the time, what we do is share little stories. This is what I did yesterday. What did you do? This is how I spent my vacation. What did you do? And telling that little story or that recount requires a certain amount of grammar. It requires the past tense. It requires action verbs. It may require adverbs and adjectives describing reactions to situations and so on. So there, the student is required to call upon his or her grammar and use it as part of the process of communicating about a particular event or topic. This is what I mean by using grammar as a communicative resource. So when we're teaching grammar, we have to go beyond looking at how grammar is used to shape sentences. We have to ask, how can grammar be linked to real context for the use of the language, to real communication? And that's where the notion of grammar as a communicative resource comes up. What do students want to use language for? Uh, and how can we incorporate into those uses the uh, awareness of the grammar that they've learned and the ability to use that grammar appropriately in conversation, in discussion, in presentations, uh, and so on. Grammar as a communicative resource. Okay, so with your partner, can you share the main ideas that he conveyed in the video? What what the main things then? All right, so some ideas, something that you find interesting or, or important in terms of teaching grammar. Anything? A a any any of, of the ideas uh, that he suggested that you'd like to to point out? No? Okay, basically, these are the things that he mentions, okay? So, the ability to use grammar while one is in the process of communicating. So, using grammar with a communicative purpose. Then, going beyond how grammar is used to shape sentences. Traditionally, grammar is seen as uh, uh, from from uh, the, uh, um, from taking a sentence as as reference. So it's it's usually from the perspective of working with sentences and perceiving the grammar within the sentence. And then we are suggesting here that in order for us to equip, equip learners with grammatical knowledge that can actually help them communicate better, we have to go beyond the level of the sentence towards the level of the text. And then it has to be contextualized. It has to be linked to real contexts for the use of the language. So helping the learner perceive that, OK, this particular language item can be used in this context uh, to achieve this and this communicative purpose. So uh, grammar needs to make sense for the learner. And uh, just uh, uh, working with rules for the sake of understanding rules uh, may not help the learner develop in terms of communication. Does it make sense? Yeah? So, in light of that, there are some questions that... There's something wrong here. Uh, Enrique. Enrique. Sorry about that, guys. Technical problems and stuff. But that But that's not the. That's not the letter I found that I used. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. 
some questions that Jack Richards asked in the video, and we're going to use these questions to guide the presentation today, okay, and our reflection. So what does the student need, need grammar for? First question, if, if I'm going to teach a grammar lesson, what's the, learner, uh, the, 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 the learning outcome that I expect to achieve? How am I, uh, is my learner going to use this in real life? What's the need that he might have to learn that particular uh, language item, grammar item? And then, how can we help the learner incorporate uh, this new language, uh, the, the, the awareness of grammar they have, into the uses of the grammar we are proposing? So how can we help them sort of get the, 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 the uh, um, awareness of grammar and put this into practice while communicating in a given uh, context of use? And finally, how can we help the student develop the ability to use grammar appropriately in different contexts? How can we help them understand that in certain contexts, there are certain forms of the language that might be more appropriate or less appropriate, and then make the right choices to make the meaning, to make the communication effective? Because oftentimes what happens is that the learner wants to communicate something, and he might end up communicating something different because the choice, the linguistic uh, uh, form he has chosen, wasn't quite appropriate. Does it make sense? How can we then, as teachers, help them go through uh, these uh, processes, help them uh, teach them something that they really need, help them incorporate this new language, and put this new language into use in real contexts and in real life? Okay? So let's start by looking at these two dialogues, okay? I have this one about T and this one. With your partner, the, per the person next to you, what's the context here? Just from the language you have there, what can we say about the people involved? What can we say about the situation, the place, and stuff like that? And the same thing for this uh, dialogue here. What information can we have in terms of the people involved, the place where they are, and the context, just from the language we have there. Okay? One minute for you to share. Okay? So the first one. The first one, what can we say about the place and the context? Could be a home, what else? Okay, what else? Good. What can we say about the people involved? Only teenagers. Exactly, exactly. They are close, okay? So they're sort of friends or, or something like that. Okay, and here? Polite, formal, polished, okay? How can... Might be. So th this is the very first thing we can say. So grammar, one of the roles of grammar in the language is... The le here, do, do you think that the, the people here, everything they have is there, okay, right there, like the tea is there, coffee is there. So the more context we have, the less grammar we need. Because one of the, the, the rules of, of uh, one of the functions of grammar is to organize the text when contextual information is lacking. So if I don't have the, the information, contextual information, I'm going to need more grammar to organize the, 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 the message, to make the message clear. The more context I have, the less grammar I need, because the context is self-explanatory. And, and uh, the, the, the context makes the whole thing clearer for the people involved. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Something else is, grammar also has the, the function of distancing the speaker, either from the interlocutor, or from reality. So that's why, for instance, if, I, if I'm not friends with someone and I'm going to ask for something, I'm not really sure if the person would like to do that. I'm sort of concerned, but I'm going to ask anyway. Am I going to get there and say, hey, can you do this? Or am I going to say, I was wondering if you could maybe do this? Option one or two? 
the second, because the more grammar we have, the more distant we get from the, the interlocutor. And also, this is one of the functions of the past simple in the English language. That's why we, we say, I was wondering if you could. Was wondering and could. The, these two past forms here, they, uh, they have this function of distancing the speaker from the interlocutor, from the listener. Does it make sense? Yeah. And there is the thing about formality that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So grammar also makes the, 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 the whole thing uh, more formal. Okay? Can, exactly, more polite. Can we say that here there's no grammar in the first dialogue? There, which type of grammar? Okay, so, so there is some sort of order there. We don't say sugar, no, for instance. Okay. And also, thanks instead of thank you. Thanks. Okay, but uh, both thanks and thank you would be okay. Yeah, right, but even so, I told we, the teacher chose thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry? All right, he has no questions there. Okay, so this is what we call spoken grammar. Okay, there is spoken grammar and there is written grammar. Okay, this dialogue here, it's spoken, but the features of grammar we have here, are they features of spoken grammar or more written grammar? More written, right? So, as I said before, this would distance the, the, the speaker from the listener. All right? And it shows it has some, some features here that would be maybe more appropriate for uh, written contexts. This is one of the first implications for teaching here. By, pro by giving students grammar rules and explanations and practice and stuff, without making it clear that there is spoken grammar and written grammar, there are situations in which we have to speak like this because of the context, but there are situations in which we have to speak like this because of the context. W students may end up in situations in which uh, that they should be close to the listener, but because of the language items they chose, they sort of distance from the listener. Okay? And then the student goes abroad, uh, is trying to make friends, and makes no friends at all because the way he speaks it's sort of, oh, it's boring, or uh, uh, it's hard to bond with this person, and stuff like that. Does it make sense mm -hmm. to everybody? Yeah? So, there is grammar here, but it's spoken grammar. There is grammar here, there is more grammar in this dialogue, because the context would require this to happen. The problem is, sometimes students are in a context in which they should speak like this, but their English sounds bookish. Loads of long sentences and long structures and uh, uh, conjunctions that would be more typical of written language and spoken language. Consequences, more typical of written language. The consequences, the, the consequences might be that they would distance themselves from, from the listener, for instance. All right? As I said, it's still about distancing. Another function of... of uh, um, the past simple, for instance, is to distance the speaker from reality. That's why when we use the second conditional, we say, if I had money, I would travel abroad. I don't have money now, I can't travel abroad now, but if I had, the choice of past simple there distances the speaker from reality. Does it make sense? Yeah? So the, the matter of distancing when it comes to grammar is really important in terms of teaching. The more grammar we use, the more distance we may get, and mind the hedging, we may get from the listener or from reality. Okay? But there are situations in which, because I'm not friends with the other person, because I want to sound more, po uh, more polite or more formal, I'm going to use more grammar. The key point is to grammar or not to grammar? That's the question. Okay? So should students use grammar in this situation? or should they use less grammar in this situation? This is something they have to be aware of, okay? Can we have an activity like this with students in class? Mm -hmm. We can, to start raising awareness of the way people speak and, and the way they can also speak in, in more friendly, informal situations, okay? This is what we call the grammar of structure, because it's the combination of 
uh, uh, morphology and syntax to, to organize the message when the context needs or requires more grammatical information. Okay? So far, so good. Then we have the grammar of orientation. I have there six words. Four, actually. Wife, work, garden, and weekend. Okay? Work can be inflected. You can change. Could be in the present, past, continuous uh, aspect. Up to you. With the person next to you, can you come up with at least three or four different sentences using those words, but each sentence should have a different meaning. Okay? So, with the person next to you, one minute. Não tem problema. That's okay. Você conseguiu entender alguma coisa? É. Quando, procura quando tiver de espanhol e daí você, você vem participar. Sim, você <risos> ah, muitas graças. Ah, muito gosto. Thank you. Bye bye. Ok? So, one, one possibility here. Okay, so future meaning. My wife is going to work this week. And another possibility. My wife has worked in the garden. Okay, so she has worked. Has she finished? No. Maybe she has. I don't know. Okay? It depends on the context. So maybe she has finished. And but so I, I sort of see the, the, the effects now. Now that the garden is beautiful and, and ready. Or maybe she's still working there. I don't know. Uh, what else? Yeah. yeah. Oops, sorry. My my uh, my wife works at uh, in the garden every weekend, for instance. Worked last weekend, things like that. This is what we call grammar of orientation. So by using different tenses, for instance, or by using determiners, my wife, his wife, the wife, this we weekend, the, exactly this weekend, that that weekend, last weekend. weekend. Absolutely. So by using different verb tenses or determiners, for instance, we change the orientation of the message. So here again, one, one of, uh, a moment in which grammar is important, because it's going to make the meaning precise. Okay? Can we do an activity like this with students? Yeah. We can. So orientating the message and making meaning precise. For instance, another activity we can do. We have pairs of sentences. And they are that they have the same verb verb uh, form. Let's say here present perfect, pre present perfect. The aspect is different because here we have the continuous aspect and here we have no aspect. But the meaning is the same. Is the meaning the same? No. It's different. And then what students have to do is to go from the forms they have here towards the meaning and compare and come up with a difference in meaning, okay? So for instance, I've done the shopping, and I've been doing the shopping. What's the difference? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So something is complete or not complete? Yeah, here, he's got a few friends and few friends. A few, some. Mm -hmm. few, some. Exactly. Exactly. So which one is more negative in meaning? The second, maybe. Yeah. And here, I'm proud of her. I'm proud of that. Here, it refers to? But here, it refers to? The action. You see? So some things that, in terms of uh, making the meaning precise, learners could benefit from. Does it make sense? Is this applicable just to speaking? Also to writing, right? Especially when it comes to referencing, the way things refer back to other things. Okay? And then we have the grammar of patterning. All right? So, if we give students an activity like this, they have the pattern, she, 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 